some other reason why probably people aren't active in the community. More people than not do just something else that participate in the faith community. Now, they're not bad people, but, but for some reason they don't seem to be compelled to participate regularly in a faith community on a regular basis. And I understand that I'm, I'm sort of preaching to the choir because you are here this morning you are participating. But however, if we look at some of the reasons, then maybe we can begin to make some adjustments to make everyone's experience here be more enjoyable. And then you may be inspired to invite other people to join us. So to start off, let's be honest. It's honest time. By a show of hands, who has ever been born in church? All right, what's our raise your hand? I'm going to say tell the truth. Come on. Who's been born in church? My hand's up. Is your prayer so Sunday? I wish that clown would just shut up. Yes, we 
This message is for you. And if you are having a ball, if you are excited, if you are busting with joy over your relationship with God, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to endure this message. You see, I had a, a season in my life when I drifted far away from my relationship with God. And then under some circumstances, I kind of found my way back. In that moment, in that season of life, when I, when I found my way back after I drifted so far off, I mean, I couldn't get enough of Jesus. I mean, I love to pray. I love to go to worship. I love to go to church. I love to sing and play my guitar or pray songs. I was in my car having the speakers turned up, jamming the Christian artists, and no one around me had ever heard of us. And this relationship with God was so strong. And I felt so much joy that it became my calling in life. Then it became my job. Not my joy. I mean, ever felt that way? That, 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 that these things that we do each and every week goes from being a joy, being a job, or support, an obligation. So today we're going to hear a quote from Jesus Christ. Out of Christ's mouth. Directly from his mouth to our ears on this very subject. So we will turn with me to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with the 28th verse. And here's what Jesus says for us that are enduring the reason. He says, Come to me. Come to me. All of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your soul, for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is love. Jesus says, Come to me. Come to me. Don't come to a checklist of do's and don'ts. Don't come to a book of church rules. Not just something you have to endure to get a reward when you die, but come to me. Come to me. Jesus is inviting us not into a religion we have to endure, but into a personal, intimate relationship with the Savior. Jesus says, look, it's just you and me. Just you and me. And, and, and we need to understand who Jesus is talking to directly in this besides us. He's talking to all the people who are weary and tired and burdened. And who, who are these people? And the people Jesus is directly talking to this is a group of people who were handed down a bunch of rules and laws and a list of do's and don'ts. A, a, a group of people who, who took the, the Ten Commandments. The religious leaders took those Ten Commandments and they made over a hundred more rules to try to protect the Ten that God gave them. And the people said, look, we can't do it. It's impossible to keep all these laws. Even remember them. And it makes us weary and tired moving up to all these expectations and, and all these things. Jesus says, well, come to me. Come to me, I will give you what? Rest. Jesus uses the metaphor of a yoke. And the yoke is a, a large wooden thingy that attached to the oxen to, to pull the plow or whatever you, you hook it up to. They were huge and heavy, and, and plus the load could overwhelm the animal if you didn't watch the animal very carefully. And Jesus says, look, look your yoke to mine. I will make your load lighter. Put your life to mine. Put your faith and your hope and your trust in me. Jesus says, do this and you will begin to learn from me. You'll learn what I am not. I'll learn that I'm not mad at you. I am gentle and I am humble in heart. And this image of God to us, gentle and humble in heart. And Jesus says, look, if you feel heavy and things don't work out like you hope, and there's a pain and a heartache and a disappointment in your life, Jesus says, look, I understand what that feels like. Get under my yoke. You will learn and I will give you rest for your soul. Has anyone here ever just needed a little rest for their soul? I mean, if your relationship with God is difficult, I mean this lovingly, that it's not God, it's us that's doing something wrong. I mean, our intentions are pure, they're right, they're honest, they're true, but, but, but our follow-through, our implementation, 
big checks from donors. I mean, big checks. I mean, six, sometimes seven figure checks from donors. And what was amazing was every single time, every single time, I would be making them like crazy. I would be going nuts over what they, they did. And every single time, each one of those donors would say, I'm glad. I am so glad that God has blessed me and gave me the opportunity to help those kids. So here's the key. You don't have to do any of these things. You don't. The key is you don't have to pray. You don't have to read the Bible. You don't have to, to give. You don't have to serve people. You, you don't have to do any of those things. But you may find when you, you have a, a relationship, an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, you may find joy in doing those things. And if you were God, I mean, would you want people? Would you want people to endure you? I mean, would you want your spouse to just endure you? Parents and grandparents, do you want your children and grandchildren to endure you or endure you? Jesus says, I want you to enjoy me. Will these things or will some things in your life be tough? Jesus says, yes. Come to me. Hook your yoke to mine and I will take them on with you. That's kind of the end of the message. And then I began to think, okay, it's a good message, maybe, maybe not, I hope they weren't poor. But that didn't give you anything to change your situation if you are enduring a religion and not enjoying the relationship with God. So quickly, um, if you're bored, come back to me here and three things you can do. One is challenge yourself. I mean, people who, who set goals and challenge themselves do not get bored. You know why? Because there's always another mountain to climb. There's always a, a way to push yourself further. The second thing you can do besides challenge yourself is search somebody. In this, in this faith community, in our, our security community, get off the sidelines and serve someone. And once you begin to do that, it doesn't become a religion. It, it becomes a relationship and I promise you you'll find joy. Third thing is to change your scenery. Change your scenery. Hey, sit somewhere different. Invite someone with you. Go to, go to church camp. Just change your scenery. Go to a different Sunday school class. Just change something and you will be amazed how things begin to change. And you go from enduring